Hey, 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 welcome to the Sports Reverence Podcast. My name is Dan. I am joined with my co-host known as the coach. Coached around the world. It's actually a birthday pod. Shout out to the coach. Oh. And uh, yeah, he's getting older, wiser. But happy birthday to my big bro, Joel. Can you give us a few thoughts on what it feels like? To be middle aged. Well, yeah, I guess uh, I'm turning towards middle age. I can't quite escape it. Um, it's periods of dread, excitement, and um, I think the biggest thing I've taken away this last year is pursue what you want to pursue, don't let opportunities pass you by. All right. So that's words, that's your wisdom. that's your words of wisdom. There we go. On this podcast, we like to talk about our unapologetic faith and our hot sports takes. So coach, why don't you walk us through what is the rundown for the day? Absolutely. So uh, we got some quick hitters as always. Uh, we're going to talk US Turkey Day. I think it's one of your favorite holidays. Um, we're going to also start up a new series on called How to Be a Champion in our real talk section and uh, go through some interesting analogies and some and some thought-provoking ideas. And then if we got time, maybe some NBA in-season tourney stuff. So why don't you start us off, Dan, with some of the quick hitters here. Let's hit up some quick hitter news. Philadelphia Phillies re-signed Aaron Nola to a seven-year, $172 million contract. Yeah, so that's a big one. Um, the NHL wants an international four-team tournament in 2025, down from the original eight. Indianapolis Colts have waived linebacker Shaquille Leonard. Very surprised, very surprised. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers have fired offensive coordinator Canada admits the team struggles. And Padres hire Mike Schilt as next <laughs> manager. Can I throw in one more? Absolutely. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Ooh. Canadian Football League, lose to the Montreal Sorry, Alouettes in the 100-something World Grey Cup. I mean, not World Cup. World Cup. Before we go anywhere else, let's handle some business. Urban Hope is uh, the mentorship program I get to run in downtown Toronto. It's a mentorship program for kids and youth in the St. Lawrence community and, and surrounding high-rise areas, and it's an opportunity for them to learn mentorship skills, learn discipline, learn life skills, uh, help them uh, create goals for themselves and achieve those goals. Uh, we teach biblical principles all along the way and we offer programs from, from weekly drop-ins for kids and youth. We have our summer camps, we have big Easter egg hunts and Christmas parties and all these things for the community. And if you're able to support our program as we continue to see success stories of, of students that have grown up through a rough neighborhood achieve success as making it to university and graduating or starting their their jobs and trades and 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 having get having life of 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 hard work and and building a family and what the family looks like if you are want to be a part of supporting that please uh consider uh checking out sportsreverence.com sponsors if you are in canada you will receive a tax receipt as well if you give more than 20 dollars, which is a great thing as well and uh, if you're outside of Canada, you can still give. We would love for you to do this. So, yeah. uh, so please uh, consider giving, consider pouring into the next generation as we build them up. Here we go. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's get rolling here. U.S. Turkey Day, Thursday, Green Bay, Detroit, Washington, Dallas, San Francisco, Seattle. Let's start with probably the most boring game because we're both not those fans. Uh, Green Bay and Detroit. Who do you think is going to take this one? Shout out, Drew Martin. Sorry, brother. Because this might be the first time I've ever seen the Lions favored by like seven and a half points Ooh. on Turkey yeah. Day. And I'm absolutely taking them. They are going to level them by at least 10, I think. Wow, by 10. Goff I mean, in home, at home, in stadium. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Player. 
That's fair. They're not playing in Lambo. So, yeah, I think it's it's appropriate. This is the first game of the day. Um, people are probably still putting their turkeys in the oven and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, let's flip over to Washington, Dallas. I think this is going to be a cupcake of a game for Dak. Thoughts? Yeah, this is, uh, in history, this has been a spot where the Dallas has one of those, like, drop the ball games. Uh, <laughs> I forget the term uh, people use for those kind of games. But uh, I, I, this could be one of those where, where it could be tighter than what you expect. But what should mm-hmm. happen is Dallas rolls over these uh, Washington commanders who's traded away two of their best uh, defensive defensive linemen and, and have built up the 49ers and other teams. I don't know what they're doing. Magic Johnson needs to revisit revisit the the, the drawing board there, um, but yeah, it should be an absolute rollover for Dallas, and Dak should have at least two touchdowns throwing and two hundred and fifty yards. I mean, Irving can't even get the Lakers to do well. We can get the Washington to do well. <laughs> uh, after the Commanders, they got the Seahawks, Eagles, Bills, Dolphins, Lions, and Commanders again. So. Um, they gotta win some of these puff, 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 cupcake games, right? So, yeah. bit of a bit of a stretch coming up. Gotta take care of the Dallas. Business. And and they've been good at taking care of their business. Uh, the problem is when it comes to big time games, is that's where they run into the brick yeah. wall. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, then my favorite game of the the night, uh, we got the probably the most intriguing in terms of seeding San Francisco and Seattle. Yeah. Uh, who are you taking here? This is what I think. Um, I think Seattle has a, they're, they're or San Fran's favored by six and a half points. I think San Fran does win this game, but it is in Seattle. Uh, so it's a yeah. home game for them. They do have that, that great uh, crowd out there. I will say Seattle keeps it close and will cover the spread, but 49ers win. That's my call. Yeah. You know, they got Seattle, they got the Eagles, they have Seattle again, and the Cardinals. Um, and they play the Ravens on Christmas Day. So a bit of a – that's definitely a big stretch for them because the Eagles looked really good last week Yeah. Um, against the Chiefs. This could be a trip-up game for the Niners, I think, being in Seattle. I'm, I'm picking the Seahawks, to, to be honest. I think the Seahawks come away. Brock Purdy had a really good game against the Buccaneers. But if the, if the Niners with defense... the win? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a trip-up game. I think it's a trip-up game. Um, they'll, be, they'll be really focused on the Eagles in the following week. And even though this is like a seeding game for playoffs, I, I don't know. I just feel it's going to be one of those days. Again, I'm very pessimistic when it comes to my team, but... We'll see. You'll see. Realist. Um, You're a realist. A, no, 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 no. No, no. I'm pessimistic. Okay. If I was a realist, I'd be like, ah, anyways, we won't go there. Uh, let's talk about the very, very, very first Friday game. I love That's, that. Uh, that. I love it. Uh, we got Miami at the Jets. Yeah, if this was what it was supposed to be, Aaron Rodgers – versus Tua, then it'd be a lot more exciting. But right now, I what 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 is the Jets quarterback? Tim Tim Boyle, I think it was. Uh, I can't Boyle even tell Boyle or bully or something. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now because I had it right here. It is Tim Boyle. I was correct. Tim Boyle, starting quarterback for the Jets. Zach Wilson, as you mentioned earlier uh, to me, he is now the third string quarterback uh, currently. So that doesn't include Aaron Rodgers. So when Aaron Rodgers is back, this guy is on the hot seat. Yeah, Jets are getting rolled. Yeah. I mean, it could be interesting. We could see another, like, high-scoring 40-10 to 10 game. But uh, I feel I feel bad for that stadium because they've not seen so many good games come through there. True. Anybody going there for a home game has just been rough. So uh, I think it's cool having it on a Friday night. Uh, kind of, you know, adds to the weekend. And I'm sure for those partying on the Thursday, it's – it's a nice way to have roll into Friday. Um, Sunday, there's a ton of games. I think we're highlighting Jacksonville and Houston. I think Houston might just be a, a permanent pick 
because of CJ Stroud right now on the, on our on our pod here. But um, whoa, 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 Mr. What? Sunshine is also a Christ yeah. follower. So how do we how do we pick on this one? I think you just like CJ Stroud more than you like Mr. Sunshine. I do. I really love CJ Stroud. Not based on faith or anything, based on performances. Yeah, I do. That's all I'm saying. Although Mr. Sunshine looked great last week, I'll have to give him that. But I'm a True. CJ Stroud True. fan. Fan. They are playing home. Super fan. Yeah. Go go Houston. I'm picking Houston. Houston, yeah, I'm picking Houston. And then this is the most intriguing game. Buffalo Philly. The, the Bills need this game. Big time. Philly, not so much. Especially getting the win after KC. Who's at, who's at home? Uh, it's uh, Buffalo at Philly. Ooh, that's tough. That is tough. You know, uh, I, I like when you and I have things to cheer about other, uh, on the same team. So we're both cheering for <laughs> Philly to lose so that our teams are, you know, one step closer yeah. to, you know, home field advantage, all that kind of thing. Yeah, so go Bills. I'm an, I'm cheering for the Bills. I do not have a lot of hope. But I'm going to say it'll be close. I'm taking the Bills. Taking the Bills. Okay. Yeah, I think it. this is, what, the second week with the new uh, offensive coordinator? Yeah. So typically you kind of get that one-week bump when you fire a coach. Uh, I think Philly's going to come back and uh, take them out. The Bills did look really good in the sense of they started to run the ball more and they did a ton yeah. of screens. That's what they have been should have been doing from the beginning. Took a lot off Josh Allen, and he did look pretty yeah. decent. So, you know what? Hey, yeah, I'm feeling yeah. more confident. Right I, think, now. I think they'll cover the spread, but it'll still be still be Philly. Um, let's, let's talk quickly about um, this, this is always a topic of concern, the, the QB carousel. Uh, we've seen we can, we've identified six teams with new QBs, and that's really changed the playoff race altogether for a lot of these teams. Cleveland Watt is without Deshaun Watson. Cincinnati is without Joe Burrow. The Jets are without Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Mini just lost Kirk Cousins. The Giants lost Donald Jones. The Rams. We picked the Rams because of um, Stafford being in and out, and Las, Las Vegas lost Carr. So. Uh, how do who do you think has impacted the most? And let's say for this season, even for next season potentially. And uh, what are your thoughts? Let's go with Cleveland. Yeah, it's it's interesting this QB carousel because there's probably we mentioned six teams of injured quarterbacks. There's probably another five to six teams of just replacement quarterbacks. And there's this You've whole been uh, England. yeah, there's, there's this whole I just very mediocre me, mediocre level of quarterback play in the NFL right now. Um, but yeah, the biggest... Hey, Tom Brady, relax. <laughs> um, it, it, that, I, you know, I agree with Tom there. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I, you, did you say for me to pick which is the most impactful? Or did you want me to talk about... Yeah, yeah. Give us your thoughts. Whichever you want to do. It's, it's either or. Yeah, definitely for me it was Cincinnati. Cincinnati was just coming together yeah. as uh, putting it together. They had a slow start to the season. They're picking it up. And then down goes Burrow. So their season is, in my books, officially done. And then next in line is then the, the Browns. I think the Browns are underratedly good. They had that huge win against Baltimore. And then, unfortunately, mm -hmm. down goes Deshaun. And they're starting their third stringer for some reason, not their second stringer. And, yeah, I'm confused about that one. But those two teams were yeah. legitimate contenders to me. The rest were just okay teams. So Yeah. Well, maybe the, the, Rams the were, cap would be there, but yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah, they're they're not looking so hot. The cap nerd in me is picking Cleveland because they gave up so much for Deshaun, and they gave him guaranteed money. If they were even to cut him next year, there's so much dead money on the books, like they're stuck with him. And if he can't come back anywhere close to where he, even where he was this year, like it's not a it's not a it's not a guaranteed thing, right? So, nope. Same. I think they're in the they're in the biggest they're in the biggest long term pressure cooker right now, because they got to sign their own re free agents, and the NFL like you make a bad decision like this, it can set you back for a long, long, long time. So I feel bad for Cleveland uh, fans. Yeah, um, I think 
you know, Kirk Cousins, he's going to come back, but where does he go? I, you know, the Vikings may have found their guy in Dobbs. Kid's playing great. Uh, Rams, I mean, uh, Vegas has Garoppolo, my guy. Um, but uh, they bench. he's just the temporary solution, right? So, yeah, um, yeah it's, I think it's... There's the starter in Vegas now. That's right. That's right. So, um, it's weird because football, you'd always talk about it being a very big team sport. But really, if you don't have good quarterback play, you're in trouble. Big time. Especially in if the you NFL can, you today. Can, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think we will see too many, too many, uh, you know, back in the day, we had the Warren Sapp led Bucks. Um, Rex Grossman and even Bears. Yeah. And even um, what the, when uh, Baltimore won with. Uh, Flacco. No, not Flacco. The guy before Flacco. Oh, yeah. That was. Um... That was like a long time ago, though. A long time ago, right? I'll just a pure defensive team uh-huh. with just okay quarterback play. You can't win the NFL today with yeah. that. Your quarterback has to be minimum, minimum above average, right? If you're if your quarterback's in the bottom, you know, bottom fifteen of anything, it's you're in trouble, right? You can win if you'll win games, but you can't go all the way through. So, the quarterback's a big, big play here, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with the rest of the year. I think the Vikings are gonna make a push, maybe, out of all these teams with, with weak quarterback play. Like, I can't see uh, Danny DeVito throwing another three touchdowns next week. But who knows? Maybe he finds himself, and all of a sudden there's a quarterback controversy for the Giants. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Imagine having two to... quarterbacks that are just not good. <laughs> As your quarterback controversy. <laughs> not a great room. Uh, not a great room. Um, last thoughts to you on the NFL side of things before you uh, pay more bills. Yeah, NFL side of things. I'm excited for uh, this. This is the home stretch here. We're already into week 12. And this is kind of what separates the, the, the top, the cream of the crop, and, and the rest that are fighting for it. So I'm excited mostly for the AFC because – who knows who's going to win there? This is so open. Is it Baltimore? Is it Kansas City? I, I don't yeah. know. It, look at Denver. Denver's just shooting out of nowhere. Yeah. They're real. Sean Payton's changed yeah. that culture. He fixed He fixed Russell Wilson. Coach of the year? Maybe, well, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Last question for you. Okay. And be honest. Are you going to work Thursday? Your boss is watching. Are you working Thursday? I have preemptively <laughs> taken the day off. I've taken the day go. off Thursday. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to work till about noon because I, I did put in a few hours on my day off on this last Monday. Uh, sure. So that's how I am saying Thursday is my day off. I like well, it. I'm joining Americans. It's Turkey Day, baby. I like it. Folks, that is how you play the game. Foresight. Foresight. All right, let's talking about Forza. We're going to roll into our next uh, commercial here. Train to invest. If you are looking to to vote, to look into into your future, if you're looking to establish yourself, gain some sort of uh, grounding for your financial future, and using foresight, check out www.train2invest.com, train2invest.com, and uh, download our free ebook. It's uh, it's not very long. I know you guys like to read out there. Lots of good information, and really, we just we're just a, a company here trying to help you gain financial freedom by cutting out the middleman, helping you learn a trading methodology that you can trade in any sort of market, um, helping you understand risk and how you view risk, and using that to your advantage. Uh, for example, Daniel will trade one thousand percent different than I will. He's much more of a gunslinger. He'll take those risks. Me. I like, to, I like to I like to take things a little more easier and be more secure and be more and I'll say less risky. But either or personality, you can and will make money in the stock market. So if you are looking to either find a way to retire, maybe pay off uh, some bills, maybe there's a wedding or a big function coming up in your life, check us out wwwtrain the number two invest.com and uh Download the ebook and let us know. All right. Uh, one of our more, I think, 
it's becoming more of our favorite segment across the pod now. And as we love talking about, about sports and stuff, but sports in real life is really cool. And uh, we've gotten some good feedback and uh, it's, it's really interesting. We're going to start a new kind of something different for us here. And uh, it's kind of like a, a series almost. And we've titled it How to Be a Champion. That's the overall arcing theme here is, is how to be a champion. And last week we looked at kind of an introduction of what do champions look like? Also, what do champions not look like? Uh, so, you know, Megan Rapinoe and or Rapino or however you want to say her name is, had a, had a, had a quote there. And um, we talked a lot about that. This week we're going to kind of look at um, winning as an athlete versus winning as a Christ follower. And uh, both are talking about winning, but what does that look like? What's the goal? Uh, why, why don't you start us off, Daniel? Yeah, so I guess um, throughout history, um, throughout, throughout all of history, the, the idea of winning and, and being a champion uh, has, has been around. And, and, and even, even in, in Scripture, we've seen uh, the Apostle Paul who you know he called the the church at Corinth to to virtuous living basically and 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 mm-hmm. to understand and exercise self control and and all the things that athletes go through and 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 have those disciplines be a part of their 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 life and their faith and have that actually be one together and 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 so really like a, a Christian perspective should have uh, understanding that there's deep roots of of Christian living. And sports and scripture, you know, throughout history, even uh, the Greco-Roman way of things was was to achieve uh, physical attractiveness and and greatness that would glorify their their pagan gods, and that's what they would be training for. That's what they'd be living for, and and what we see in in, in being a Christ follower and Christian living, you know, there is an understanding that yes, the the body is important, but and the soul is also important as well. And you you're supposed to actually combine those together, and and all the practices of of uh, the training your body and, and understanding how to run a race and, and 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 boxing and boxing with a purpose that you learn those in scriptures. They also apply to how you live out your faith and and how actually that will be. Uh, the most important thing for your life is to apply those disciplines to your faith and how you walk in your faith. And that's basically a little intro of, of how it's been throughout history that way. I don't think anybody listening today thought we'd go back to the Greco-Romans <laughs> and uh, a bit of a history lesson there. But I think you're absolutely right. Um, and I think that's a really good example because it's who, who what's your purpose? Like, what are you trying to do? And in that time, and a lot of athletes today, it's glorify self through what we're doing. And and, it's, and talking about athletes, when we, when we talk about satisfaction in the world versus satisfaction in Christ, it's very, very different, right? So from in the world, as an athlete, you know, you go to Linden Christian School, there are tons of banners and stuff that both of us have helped put up, Right. Um, kids these days have no idea how sparse it was back in the day, what the competition was like, but, uh, they're just used to winning now because, you know, Winnipeg is a different story, but not to sound like a super old man on my birthday, I won't throw it that way. But, um, as an athlete, when you're looking to win, it, it, it it's something that you have to do every single year right winning isn't one and done it's seasonal every year you're getting prepared for the next year you're putting in the time and the work uh and and it's about that external validation and when i say external validation even like there's so many different like you look at the houston astros when they won the world series there's an asterisk beside that depends on who you talk to uh when the lakers won in the bubble there's an asterisk besides that I won't bring up the Spurs in 99 because there's no asterisk beside that one. Um, and all across sports, you can debate winners and losers. Even if you win the trophy, there could be some sort of uh, scandal 
that that brings it down, brings off that shine, and brings off that satisfaction of winning. And in our world today, it's all about what have you done for me lately. When you look at guys who are looking to build their legacy, there there's guys who and women, obviously, when I'm talking about this, but like there's people who haven't won, but are still really excellent in their field of choice. So they have to find other ways to prop up their legacy, to get that satisfaction. I've scored the most points. I've played the most games. I had a really good uh, WAR, things like that. When in reality, you used to just be how many chips did you have, right? So in and because of this lack of satisfaction and because of this uh, waning sensation of winning, Athletes and, and athletics have turned into a popularity contest. You know, if for me, the biggest difference is when I see guys uh, come into the stadium in the NBA. It used to be growing up, suit and tie, you're coming in for work. And then they made this big deal about, oh, I need to have style and all this kind of stuff. So you're guys dressing in like baggy jeans and hoodies, uh, it kind of went steered back towards being a little more business-like as, you know, you had more sponsorships. Now you got guys who are wearing dresses, it feels like, when they're coming into the stadium, um, right? It's about how do I show my self? How do I show me as a winner? How do, you know, I'm winning the fashion game or I'm setting the new trend because I can't win enough in basketball or win enough in my sport to get that satisfaction, so we talk about this in the worldly view again. It's it's fleeting, it's uh, it's speculative depending on who, on the circumstances of your win, and uh, it does it it can't be your identity. Your identity can't be oh I am an athlete. Cool. So when you, that's why you see a lot of guys when they retire, they don't know what to do. Look at Tom Brady. You know I I saw a bunch of memes where he spent. Three weeks with his kids and said, you know what? Going back to the NFL. <laughs> right? So your identity it can't be tied to something that's so fleeting because you'll never find true happiness or satisfaction. Yeah, it's, that's really good. And yeah, the the slogan, more than an athlete, could just be <laughs> you know so much more than what it, LeBron James has made it be. LeBron James yeah. is the he's perfect example of... of uh, not having satisfaction from all these championships that he's won and all the records that he has, the most points ever scored. You know, he's got to create these uh, foundations and can they have a museum of himself now uh, that mm. you can attend where there's a holographic uh, LeBron James that will be there and his, his old apartment will be set up there. And uh, I don't know if it will include his, his Humvee, which however how he uh, was able to get it there, but... Um, it has got to be yeah. the LeBron James, I promise school, you know, got to find the satisfaction in, in now he's trying to find satisfaction in other people's opinions, his perception of himself and his, his legacy. Yeah. Right. And, uh, they're, they're never going to find that satisfaction in those, those things. And right. where, where true satisfaction comes is when you receive the, the, the peace of God in your life. That's what, um, you're 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 gonna have this it's 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 a heavenly peace it's a heavenly hope that you have because you know that you are serving a purpose so far greater than things of this world and and when the the lessons we learn from achieving uh success in in, in sports like the the this the value of of teamwork and industriousness um also known as hard work uh the value of loyalty all those things really build up your character uh e exemplify the way we are to be living our lives every single day and th that's why i find so much beauty in sports and that's why i love i love paul in the bible because he talks about sports all the time and and he mm -hmm. relates to all the different places he's going to speak talking about sports to how we are to live our lives and that's where you try and tr try to find uh, your success. That's where you try to find um, um, 
what do you call it uh, satisfaction right and and on top of that uh, there's this this other gift of, of heaven when you are when you're believing and following Jesus right so that's uh, another added benefactor right so what are your thoughts coach yeah I think when you look at winning as a Christian it's about basically living like Jesus and that's so opposite of what the world is saying today right the world is saying you gotta win you have to have something flashy a lot of money uh status gotta drive a sick car big house you know jewelry things like that or a high paying job or a big title whatever whatever those things are but when you're winning as a christian it's like do you do the right things when no one is watching are you you know tithing even though the bills are, are coming up are you staying in your prayer closet a little extra longer than you usually would because you feel the prompting of the spirit for you baptists out there is it clapping your hands when the the song gets joyful right um winning as a christian is about obedience i think and and doing and, and and almost and living a contrarian lifestyle and also understanding that your final reward is in heaven it's just store up your treasures in heaven right you can you can have a bazillion dollars like jeff bezos but when the dude passes his stock from amazon is staying in the market it's not going anywhere he can't take any of that with him there's no prime delivery up to heaven right so that I think the idea of what does winning look like, it's about, and again, it is tied to sports and when you're training because it's about doing the little things well over and over and over again, right? It's like that's the, the story of the talents, right? It's doing the little things over and over again, being taking a risk to go for the win, but being responsible for what you've been given. Like, you have a platform every Sunday, right? And you want to be obedient to God. You want to listen to what he's saying. And ultimately, you want that platform to grow. If you're not responsible with that, God's going to find a different use for that platform. And me, I have a platform every single day. Whenever I go into work, the people that I deal with on a, on a daily basis, um, the friends I have back home, that's my platform. This podcast is part of that. Right? And if I'm not obedient, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect, I'm definitely will put up my hand and say, hey, in my 37 years, I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, but if I'm obedient and I'm listening to what God is telling me to do, whether it's something small as, hey, text this person. Just say what's up. Or, hey, tell Daniel you want to preach on Sunday about this doesn't matter what it is. If I'm obedient to God, that's the win. Right? Because you never know. You, we talk about this often in the pod. You may not be the one who sees your friend or your coworker or your family member come to Christ. You might be the one who just plants the seed. Or you might be the one who waters the seed. Or gives it fertilizer. Or, you know, clears out the weeds. Whatever. You don't know what can happen because God doesn't fit inside the box you can construct. Yeah, and I, I love all these UFC yeah. fighters and boxers who, you know, they go nine rounds for the boxers or, or however many rounds for UFC. And, and right after they're done, they are sharing how they got to where they they, mm -hmm. they, they, they are. It's it's through their – because of their faith, because of their um, things that they've been practicing in their lives, it translates – to their platform and then and then they're using their platforms to share about that that's why i'm so enamored with cj stroud like this this quarterback like I, i'm going to mention him every podcast until someone tells me to not and then i'm still going to do it i don't know uh he's just so good and and he still brings it back to where he is rooted in i saw this great interview it was actually with um ah tom brady tom brady was interviewing uh, uh on the same interview with with CJ Stroud and and CJ Stroud asked him, you know, like what are what's some advice uh, to to handle the the pressures of this world and and how to stay um, 
you know, on my path of, of my platform and how to be honest towards that. And, and Tom Brady was like, you know what? Everyone on, on, on game days, all your friends, family members, they're, they're, it's almost like they're at vacation time when they're coming to watch you play. That's their time of relaxing and, and fun. But you, you're a professional. This is your job. You got to not worry about entertaining your friends and family members during the week or yeah. anything like that. Your job is that on Sunday. And, and then CJ Stroud ended the interview by saying, yeah, that's absolutely – uh, he, he loved that. And then he also equated that to that's just like my uh, how this platform is my uh, platform where I get to perform football. But I also get to glorify God. I also get to praise his name because yeah. this is what he's given me and I get to show out that way. And I thought that's that's beautiful. I love that. And I'm, amazing, uh, yeah. I'm becoming a Tom Brady post career Tom Brady fan, I guess. So. Hey, uh, truth is truth, right? I mean. If you think about it that way, you have a job to do. As a, as a Christ follower, you have a job to do. And as we'll talk about in the following weeks, there's going to be good times, there's going to be bad times, there's going to be uh, problems you can't solve. But you have a job to do. And, and I think that also ties to spiritual warfare and it ties to a lot of different things. And we're going to try and cover a ton of this stuff for the next few weeks. And, of course, we, we want to hear what you guys have to say. So don't hesitate to reach out at us on Twitter or, sorry, X and Facebook and Instagram, YouTube. And, yeah, um, just remember that being obedient will open up a lot of doors for you and, and uh, that you can't put God into a very small box that is human humankind. God works outside the boxes that we create. Um yeah, that's all I got for you on that piece. Yeah, I love it. Um, you know, there's lots of, if you're interested in, in looking at, uh, or if you're really wondering if, if all this stuff that we're saying is in the Bible, absolutely it is. You can look at 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 to 27. That's kind of my uh, my my go-to verse yeah. of uh, yeah. that, that shares about running a race, boxing, and um uh, training your body and uh all those things how they can relate to you know your christian walk so check it out awesome um do you want to wrap up for today i think that's a good yeah i think good that's section about that you know nba yeah we can talk about it next week because i think next that's week good. by wednesday that's when we release the next pod the next three days of the in-season tournament have will be completed and it's going to give a great Beauty. picture of what's going on in the NBA in-season tournament. Yeah. So. Love it. Love it. Cool. Uh, anything special going on at church or in, at the church this week that you want to highlight before we wrap up for today? Yeah, we're doing something new. The last Sunday of every month, we're doing this, one, this, this uh, kind of special service called One Family Sunday where we try to encourage Christian living uh, as something we do together and that's what the church in acts did and we want to do uh, that and resemble that as well and we want to have a time where our, our the people at church can encourage each other with their uh, different uh, testimonies of, of the goodness of God different prayer requests that they may have and then we'll have some uh, we'll break some bread together and uh, it's just a great chance for us to uh, to do that and I think that's a great opportunity if you're if you're an American, uh, this weekend, as you're celebrating your Thanksgiving, that's uh, something you can do with your friends and family members. Maybe you can invite someone that uh, you know isn't uh, yeah. uh, that you know maybe you'll be alone and might be alone, and you can bring them into your family and welcome them in. Uh, that's that's kind of what the practice of of Christian living is. So, yeah, that's what's Absolutely. going on. Beauty, awesome, cool. Find us on Twitter. Ah, oh, X. I always see Twitter. Find us on X. Find us on YouTube. Find us on Facebook and uh reach out we love 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 interacting with you guys um if you want to check out urban hope hit up the website uh the sports reference website uh definitely a place to donate and uh yeah we will see you guys in the next pod next week peace out that's all i got peace <laughs>